Hi, Matthew. Uh, Stephen Roman here, uh, President and uh, CEO at Global Atomic Corporation, and uh, glad to be back on Crux. Good. Well, good to see you. I mean, it's just been a sort of tricky environment out there. Um, we, we've had uh, coups confirmed by the U.S. government in Niger. Um, you're t- you're, I would like an update from you, actually, as to kind of how things are in country, because it's a pretty tricky environment out there. We're heading to supply deficit for uranium. I'm trying to work out who's going to be able to actually kind of step up here. So where are you guys at? Yeah, we put out that press release about a week or so ago. Uh, the, the U.S. Uh, State Department uh, finally decided to declare the situation in Niger a coup. Uh, clearly, that's uh, slowed down our, our banking uh, situation. So the the banks effectively have said, listen, they, they haven't pulled out, but they've uh, gone into a hiatus here until there is a clear decision on what happens in Niger as far as a new government. Uh, so that could take a while. There's been some discussions about uh, calling an election within six months, and some people are talking three years. The last one I went through uh, took 10 months before an election was called. So you know, we, we don't really know. It's a it's a fluid situation from a political point of view. <clears throat> but um, as we mentioned in the press release, the uh, the government are strong supporters of our project, uh, and uh, so we're carrying on with uh, uh, moving things forward the best we can under the circumstances. Uh, there were disruptions in logistics because of borders closing. <clears throat> now that's uh, reopened. As far as we're concerned, we're we're now using the port of Lome in Togo, and uh, of course uh, going through Togo and Burkina Faso and into Niger. So uh, basically, we we got to the point where our uh, consumables have now been uh, restocked. We can re- recommence mining. Uh, but uh, we're waiting to see probably for the next couple of weeks uh, how things go. We still like to get some more supplies in there. So things are moving uh, on our front as far as the project goes. Uh, Of course, our full team is there, and uh, everybody is uh, safe and sound and working hard. Uh, Right now, I would say uh, there's still... In Niger, with the politics, uh, and and people must realize that you know, uh, in North America, in Western uh, Europe, in the UK, we we have elections typically. Well, sometimes in Africa, political change is done through through coups, and uh, of course, across West Africa, now we have a number of nations, Mali and Burkina and Guinea, that are all being run by military uh, juntas and mining is continuing and and all the mines are operating because at the end of the day the country the junta needs cash flow they need revenue they need jobs and so that's what we're providing and and they have uh, not indicated anything different in niger so i think uh, generally speaking all is well there it's been quiet it's been a peaceful coup. There hasn't been any shooting. I did hear this morning that uh, there were some people that uh, looked like they were trying to break out President Bazoum from his uh, lodgings. Um, and I, I understand that there was some some uh, activity there relating to that and maybe trying to round up those people. But that's all I know at this point in time. I guess some um, you know that there's going to be more news coming out on that. Lots of digest there. I think. I guess what people be interested in is clearly the the, the financing component. Now, uh, you know, been a situ- been in a couple of situations where, where where queues are at play, and you can't do anything because you can't move money, etc. Uh, let alone, you know, maybe contemplate trying to do a deal. Is what would it take for the U.S. government to actually? open the gates again because you've kind of got the old old government with in Mohammed Bazou. Um he's still in country. You've got this this new the new uh, general Tia Chani um Chiani, with, with Chiani, yeah. Chiani is like new you know a new government. Is it gonna take an election, which is somewhere between six months and three years you're 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 hearing, or is there some kind of I I guess compromise which would 
um, work for the Western powers that be. Because obviously the French, big say in this. The U.S. as I guess, um, well, I, I you know trying trying to broker some kind of deal here. Um, is there a kind of halfway house here? Well, because the finance guys just can't do anything without knowing <laughs> with some certainty what the heck's going on, can they? Yeah, no, there there's some good points you mentioned there. So I think uh, definitely there's been some mediation going on between the, the U.S. that has a large military base there. It's still operating. Uh, the Algerians uh, and the junta trying to come up with some sort of a plan my understanding is that the junta want to have a public consultation about when they should call an election. So they, they seem to be working with the population. Uh, they want to have some sort of a general discussion with, with the population and get their feeling on when they should call an election and how it should be handled. So, you know, it's, it's really a, a sort of a different situation when you have the the incumbent government talking to the population and trying to come up with a plan. So uh, they're trying to do things in a friendly and orderly way. And so that's what we found being there. And we have expats in country now, and they say things are moving along well and everybody's peaceful. Um, But you know what? To get uh, American banks, Canadian banks back into the picture, I I think there would have to be some sort of at least an election called and a date. And there's got to be a clear path to a a, a democratically elected government. So, you know, I think that that we need to set, set aside. This is this is a political situation. It's not affecting the mining situation. It's not affecting, uh, you know, the overall general view of uranium and nuclear energy and all of those things that we are involved with. The key thing from us is the financing package. And interestingly enough, since we announced that, we've been flooded with groups that want to finance the company. So various, various ideas, uh, debentures, uh, offtake agreements, uh, joint ventures. I mean, right now we're assessing all of these situations. Uh, we've been invited to go to Beijing and speak at a big uranium conference there. Uh, Actually, uh, Tim Campbell is going to be doing that talk uh, next week. He's leaving to go to Beijing. And all the uranium companies are there. Cameco is there, and I believe Goviex is there, and Paladin, the whole group. So Go- Global Atomic was invited to speak. Uh, the Chinese, of course, are very big in Niger. They have a big operating oil and gas refinery there that they installed, a $5 billion project. Uh, they've got the Azalik mine. Uh, they're very keen on getting involved with DASA. They, they uh, are talking about either offtake agreements or JVs. Uh, there's two players there, CGN and CNNC. Uh, there's other players in the country. There's juniors there, if you can imagine, now trying to secure exploration agreements and get back to exploration in the field. So there's a lot of movement going on, and one way or the other, uh, we're going to uh, come up with a solution and uh, get financed and keep moving the project forward. We have, sorry, we we have told uh, the market we're going to have a six to twelve month delay. So rather than having yellow cake beginning of 25, it'll probably be beginning of 26. I don't think in the grand scheme of things that's going to be a bad thing. Uh, but, you know, obviously the market needs to know that this situation, this political situation, has slowed things down. Let's, but let's look at some of the other options on the table here. Clearly, you're talking about, what, you know, Western capital. You know, the U.S. has said, you, you know, you this is a coup, a coup d'etat official. N- no banks can partake in this. You've got enough capital the last 12 months, you, you said publicly. Um in a situation like this, because you're public, you're public company. Are you are you bound by anything that that comes out of the U.S. as well, other than just purely financial in terms of the way you behave, 
where you plan, who you deal with. You're going to Shanghai to speak to, speak at a Chinese conference. Clearly, they're in Be- Africa. Beijing. Beijing. Um, you know, d- does that does it's just your thinking change? Do, are you allowed to adapt, or are you going to be bound by the U.S. Poten- potential for sanctions? Well, listen, you know, we have a company to run and we have uh, American utilities that have contracted with us. We need to have a clear path to production. Uh, You know, we've got our permits. We've started mining. We're at the ore zone. We've started building the plant. We've got long lead items we've ordered. We, You know, this, this project's moving ahead. How many companies can say that, Matthew? You know, like Zero. we're a developer that's actually <laughs> developing. Zero is the answer to that question. No, I, I, I get it. I guess that's the kind of frustration bit here. You're the most advanced out of all of the companies in terms of, you know, licenses, permits, and as you say, everything that you're doing on the ground. Um, and I'm just trying to work it. Do you just sit and kind of wait it out and do what you need to do, manage your capital carefully, and say you've announced six, maybe 12 months to lay um, for yellow cake, um, and the market just has to kind of suck it up, or do you try and you know have a kind of plan B, as it were? Would that make sense, or does, well, would that we've be got a plan B to, and I, a plan C already. So you know what, uh, we we're we're working on a number of fronts here, and we want to do what's best for the company and the shareholders. And clearly, our customers we have big customers here now. And, uh, you know, so I think people need to just uh, have a bit of patience, stand by. Uh, the project's moving ahead. We don't want to sit on our hands here and just manage cash. That, that's, not a, that's not the way to go. I mean, we are uh, in the process of building a, a project here and building a plant, and we need to keep going on that track. So this okay. is the, this is the plan. I, I I think it would be very bad for the company just to sit and wait it out, which you can of course do, and don't spend any money. Uh, but you know that's not what we want to do. Okay, then to, so I'm going to stick with the money because the money's what everyone's cons- thinking about, concerned about. Okay, you've just you've announced this sort of LOI for, for the third agreement, and you're suggesting it could be. You know, um, circa 250 million bucks worth of, of value to you, depending on how it all kind of pay, pays out and plays out. Um, is it a case that there are com- You said people are approaching you saying, look, we, in terms of financing, at the point where you can, or we can allocate capital to you, you know, we'd love to be involved with that one. So let's try and bash out the basic premise of a deal. Let's try and understand what's on offer from you guys. And let's maybe think about broad terms, what they could look like. So that we can move quickly when this well no, normal services are resumed, or are you not allowed to talk to them? Right now, we're talking to everybody that's expressed interest in the project, and that's quite a long list. And of course, we have uh, people in Canada, the U.S., Europe, Asia, and we are listening to what they've got to say, and figuring out what's the best route for us to go forward. So at the moment, uh, it's a little bit too early for us to really be specific. The good thing is that there is a huge amount of interest. And now that people see that uh, the typical development banks are laying their tools down, so to speak, for the time being until there's a clear political path in Niger, it's opened up the gate for many others to come in and talk to us. So this is this is very positive. You know, okay. we, we aren't sitting here like a lame duck. Okay. Well, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at is trying to understand, you know, which bits you're still in control of. And it sounds like you're, you're getting on with it. But you said earlier that the government supports you. Now, by government, do you mean Ministry for Mines and Energy? Because that hasn't really changed, has it? In terms of you know the people that you contact in as part of the government hasn't really changed. We're talking about the leadership, and and presumably the the people around it. That's changed. Well, but- of course, there's a whole new cabinet in Niger right now. So there's a new prime minister. Uh, there's a new mines minister that's also minister of energy and petroleum. So right. basically, we deal with that department. 
Okay. Uh, so, you know, the, the, were they all new to you? Are they all new to you? No, the, the bureaucracy is the same, but the minister was changed. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we, we, we still have lots of people we know in the ministry. Thirty. Uh, but the minister is new. And we know him too, because he used to be the head of Sopama, the, go- the government's uranium company. So all of these guys are very well known to us. Okay. Understood. It's, it's not like uh, rewriting the book here. Okay, she, just she messaged moved a few players around. Right, she messaged. You message. I think that's good. I think that's that's comforting actually. It's your message to shareholders today is what if you if, if you're like just a couple of sentences, what would it be? Right now that we're moving forward with the project, we're looking at alternatives for financing. Uh, we've got a lot of interest from various groups, and we're assessing what's the best route to go for the company. Right, but you're assessing, but. At, because the U.S. government has said what they've said, you can assess alternative routes, but you can't actually get finance till there's some resolution on the democratically elected government. Is no, that no, that's clear? not correct. Okay, that's tell me. Correct. That that's relating to the development banks that were involved with us. Okay, good. However, Wait. there are others. There's financial players. Uh, that uh, like to buy uranium and give prepayment and they like to secure. There's trading companies out there that want to do that kind of thing. Uranium is hot. People are trying to get a hold of some physical uranium. So there's people out there that want to make deals. And you're allowed to do deals with them? Of course. Yeah, we're, we're not bound by anything. Perfect. We're doing, we want to do what's the best for the company and... Uh, the banking side, I think we might end up with a project here, Matthew, with no debt if we can swing this properly. So you know what that would mean? That would cut your costs tremendously because you wouldn't have to make interest payments. You wouldn't have to have cost overrun facilities. A bank bank uh, arrangements uh, can be quite onerous. We may find that uh, this has been a blessing in disguise. Okay. Now, I just want to be really, really clear. I want you to be really, really clear with people. So your your, your hands are not bound. No, These they're not. These conversations are more than just conversations, and deals deals are on the table to be to be done. Is is any part of this deal structuring involve uh, Turkey? Are you tempted at all? No, to no. Turkey it, is no. Turkey is Turkey. We we have oh. not touched Turkey. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. Okay, well, I appreciate your time today. Um, thanks very much. Um, I think it's exciting times out there on, on the macro front. Um, I think we saw we saw uh, uranium spot kind of pass back three seventy again. Um, yeah, but we went dollar dollar twenty five up yesterday, so it's over yeah. seventy again. And uh, of course, people need to recognize as well that we're in the middle of calculating our new ore reserves, our new mine plan, a new NPV. And uh, there's going to be a significant increase based on the drilling we did and moving a lot of our inferred resources to M&I, which are now being translated into an updated mineable reserve. So, you know, everybody out there is still valuing the company based on the 2021 uh, uh, feasibility study and the phase one mine plan. Well, now that's going to that's going to have a massive increase based on all the new drill information. So, you know, the value of the project is continuing to increase as we continue to do more work. And we're de-risking the project now by all the work we've done and with potentially new sources of financing coming in. Okay. Stephen, appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Pleasure. All the best.